Welcome back to Replay Mondays. This week's Replay Monday video is Lord, I'll give you my whole heart. Let's get ready for an amazing word from the Lord. Grab your coffee, grab something to write on, and let's watch Replay Mondays. God just, can I tell you something? God don't want to know what you know. <laughs> he wants you to live a life that's pleasing to him. But he don't want you to come to him talking about all the stuff you know. He know the word. He is the word. He We pray the word. We pray his perfect will. But God ain't used, interested in no stoic relationship. Him, this, thou, that ain't what God wants. God wants your heart. <laughs> Say that today. God wants my heart. God is looking for my heart. God wants my heart. He wants my whole heart heart. He's not looking for proper etiquette. He's not looking for proper protocol. God wants my heart. God is after my heart. God is after my commitment. God is after the relationship with me. He's not interested in all that I know. As a matter of fact, the more that I grow in the things of him, the more that I realize, the less that I talk in his presence, the more he's going to fill me up. Ooh. The less that I talk in his presence, the more he's going to fill me up. The less that I come with him with all of my isms and issues. Matthew 6, he said, first of all, I know what you got in need of. <laughs> oh, come on, y'all. That's what he said. He said, look, I know what you need. I already know what you need. I already know you need food. I already know you need clothing. I already know you need shelter. And it's fine. We confess so that we remind ourselves of his promises. We confess so that we remind him. He's like, I already know. I already know you need food. I already know you need clothing. I already know you need, need shelter. What I need you to do is seek me first. <laughs> what I need you to do is make sure you'll have no other God before me. <laughs> what I need you to do is make sure, my God, that you seek me first. I'm after your whole heart. Well, I can't give my whole heart to God if I'm not transparent and vulnerable with him. Ooh, I'm gonna help somebody's relationship today as well. My God, if you, can I say that Holy Spirit? If you are, yes, sir, thank you. If you are in a relationship with someone and you can't be transparent and you can't be vulnerable, can I tell you something? There's some issues and some problems in your relationship. If you are married to someone and you just can't, talk to them and you just can't be yourself and it may not be the other person they may have provided a place for you to be transparent and vulnerable it may be you dealing with rejection it may be you dealing with insecurity it may be you dealing with fear right but can i tell you the manipulation and the twisted perverseness when we don't operate in authenticity and truth in a relationship we're still walking around in lies let me give you a perfect example. So you 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 have a friend or someone, and I did this <laughs> recently, and I wasn't even trying to be funny. I went to eat with a friend, and I was like, um, what kind of, I told her, I said, well, find some place to eat. Well, she made a couple suggestions. I don't like them. I, they, I like them, but I don't really like them. Well, the old me would have just gone <laughs> for the sake of, right? The old me would have just endured for the sake of, but the new me that operates in transparency and vulnerability was like, no, nah, I don't really like the places. Like I eat there and today I'm not in the mood to just be at an eat there kind of place. Today I'm in a mood. I want to be able to eat something good. So we negotiated and came to a compromise of something we could both enjoy. That's transparency and vulnerability. Now, what she could have did was got offended at my honesty. I don't know why I'm going here today. I don't know why. I'm going. What she could have did was got offended at my honesty, but she didn't. We found a medium compromise. When we are in a relationship, a love, a real relationship with someone, I got, we have to be able to be forthcoming, not rude, not callous not ugly, not menacing. But when we're not being truthful, we're walking in lies. I told another friend of mine the other day, we were sharing some things back and forth. And I was saying, well, did you tell the person how you feel? And they were like, no, I didn't tell them how I felt. And I said, 
How can you require integrity and character from them? And you want them to be transparent and vulnerable with you, but you're not sowing integrity, character, transparency, and vulnerability in your own relationship. We reap, come on now, we reap what we sow. Every seed reaps after its own kind. My God. So God in his faithfulness is a shield and a wall. He's looking, my God, come on, y'all. He's looking for us to come to a different relationship with him. Hebrews 3 and 2, he was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house, right? We, When we're faith, come on now, come on now, my God. 2 Timothy 2 and 13, if we are faithless, he still remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Oh, even when I'm faithless, he still remains faithful because I cannot, my God, this on the same, Hebrews 10 and 23, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. <laughs> my God, he will promise is faithful. My God, my God, whatever he promises for us is faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. Matthew 25, 21. Think about the parables of the talents. Think about the end of what he said at the end. He said, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. So there's got to, got to be a particular happiness that comes with being faithful. Come on now. First Peter 4 and 19. So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. We remain faithful to him and continue to do good even when we're suffering. Why? Because even in our suffering, he's got us. Revelations 2 and 10. Do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death. And I'm going to give you life as your victor's crown. So his faithfulness, God's faithfulness towards us becomes a shield and becomes a wall. But there's got to be a place that we go in God. There's got to be a place that we tap into in God. See, the only reason we are not vulnerable and transparent, I don't, I don't know why we don't think God sees and knows. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why we don't, I don't know what in our head makes us think that God doesn't see and know exactly where we are. I haven't figured that out yet, right? But the reason that we are not this transparent are vulnerable is because we living with trust issues. If I really trust it, who oh God is so faithful, right? Faithfulness is beyond God blessing you with some money or blessing you with a house or but God's faithful. God is faithful to you when you sleep, right? God is faithful to you. The 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 little eggs, the, the eggs are, are birds now they've had the little birds, the little eggs was just being eggs. The little birds now are just being birds. Their dad is doing exactly what he's supposed to do, protecting, providing, and hunting for them. The little birds are to do. They're being little birds in this season, right? They know what they have need of. Ooh. They don't even know what they have need of. They don't, they have no clue that they need to rely on their parents for food, but they're relying because they're just acting in their natural state. The difficulty of many of us is we're not acting in our natural state as God as provider, as God as protector. Remember I told you the nest was built in an un, might not have seemed like the perfect situation, wasn't it high up in a tree, wasn't beautiful, but the nest was built in the perfect place. I'm, a, I'm about to shout myself. The nest was built in the perfect place. My God, God is calling some of you to an assignment. Can I speak by the spirit, Lord? It may not look glorified. It may not have your name on the wall. It may not look like it's all of that. But God is calling you to an assignment in which he's going to provide for you, in which he's going to protect you. But he needs you in this place so that you can mature, so that you can grow, 
so that you can blossom and so that you can bloom, right? They're in the perfect place. My God, I thank you for this. They're in the perfect place for them to be able to blossom, for them to be able to, they, they're in the perfect place because we're not going to disturb them. We're in a, God provided a perfect place for them. May not look like everything they want, may not look like, but in this season, it's what they need so that they could come into the fullness of who he called them to be in Christ Jesus, which is a bird. He's looking to pull us to a place in our relationship with him so that we can become the fullness of who he called us to be as his children. My God, as his children. Come on, Father. My God, as his children. That's what he's looking for, to pull us into a place of where we can be as his children. Let's go back to us learning how to imitate God, be imitators of God, therefore as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a sacrificial offering. Matthew 5 and 48, be perfect, therefore as your heavenly father is perfect. Luke 6 and 36, be merciful just as your father is merciful. Come on, we act in the image. Come on now, but if I'm gonna act like him, I gotta trust him. If I'm gonna act like him, I gotta allow my relationship to go to such a depth in him. Oh my, 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 my. The pruning part, let's skip over. Come on, Lord, you're just taking us everywhere this morning. I feel like I'm all over the place, but at the same time, exactly where I need to be. John 15, he said, I'm true vine, my father's a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. The problem is at the place in the pruning process, we detach ourselves. We want everything to be ooh, like that. Ooh, all this little da 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 da. No, you got to be pruned. You got to be cleaned up. You you've been conformed to the things of this world that don't look like God. There are places you don't act like God. There are places you don't smell like God. There are places that you don't that you don't live in the image of Christ. There's some doubt in your life. There's some places where you're not letting his faithfulness be your shield and wall. There's some parts of you that are still rogue. There's some things in your heart that does not line up. It's some places that you trust God and there's some places that you do not trust God. So he's got to prune you if you're going to come fully forth, if you're going to be in the fullness of who God, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be half or partial. I don't want you, you know how you've seen the, um, you know, you, oh, that's powerful, Lord. Seeing the image of someone when it's like half of a robot and half of a human face. We don't want to be half of living robotic according to this society, responding how this society and world does. We want the softness, the flesh to be in the image of Christ and how God created us. My God. So the pruning process, this is the place where most people escape. This is the place where most people run because no one told them when the word says in Romans 12 and 2, do not be conformed, right? Don't be conformed to the things of this world. Well, I was meditating on there this morning. There's different, there's a little bit more to that we have to diagnose, di digest. Romans 12 and 1, it says, therefore I urge you brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies, dedicating all yourself. <laughs> Say that, I gotta dedicate all myself. See, I gotta dedicate all myself. Well, if God don't have my whole heart because of fear, because of rejection, because of insecurity, I'm not dedicating my whole self. Oh, my, 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 my. If God don't have my whole heart, I'm not dedicating myself. If I don't trust God to be faithful, I'm not dead. If I don't act like the little birds in the nest and just let my daddy and my mom be my daddy and my mom, right? Then I'm not dedicating my whole self. It says, therefore, I urge you, brother and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies, dedicate all yourself. <laughs> I got to dedicate all myself. My God, I got to dedicate my time. Come on now. I got to dedicate myself. I got to dedicate my time. I got to dedicate my heart. I got to dedicate my resources. My God, I got to dedicate my purpose. I've got to dedicate myself. Oh, come on now. I got to consecrate myself. I got to set myself apart. Come on, y'all. Oh, my 
God, I thank you for your word today. So it says, he says, you'll set yourselves apart as a living sacrifice. Ooh, as a living sacrifice. I got to set myself apart as a living sacrifice. Holy and well-pleasing to God, my God, which is your rational act of worship. When I set myself apart, holy and pleasing and dedicate myself, that's an act of worship. My God, that's an act of worship. Come on, y'all. When I set myself apart, that's the act of worship. God is looking for me. Um, God is looking for those to worship him in what? What are we supposed to worship God in? We're supposed to worship God in what? Half truths. Come on now. Come on now. I ain't supposed to. If he's asking me to bring me his whole heart, I can't bring me half of my heart because that's a half truth, right? He's looking for those to, who worship him to worship him in what? In spirit and in truth. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. He's looking for my reasonable service is to worship him. My reasonable service. He's looking for me to worship him in spirit and truth. He's looking for me to dig up. So here's the next part of this. It says, and do not be conformed to this world. Woo. Let me tell you what the Amplified says. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. Ooh. See, at that point is when we tend to, when we begin to see the superficialness to ourselves. Ooh, that's, that's the point we tense up. That's at the place that we usually begin the word. When the word reflected in us begins to show, I'm superficial, begins to begins, begins to show, my God, I still have some parts of this world in me, right? So, and because we cannot be real, we really never had anybody pointed out with this level of gentle, gentleness. Some of us don't, Holy Spirit, you are all in me today. Some of us don't even know how to respond to the gentleness of God's word because people have only talked harsh to us all our life. Well, when you're used to um, responding a certain way, you'll kind of become numb. Remember we read that in the book. You'll kind of become numb to things that are tender responsive. You'll kind of become numb to proper grooming. When, when we're being used to handled a certain way, it sometimes makes us hardened and non-receptive, my God, to the tenderness of the Holy Spirit, to the small, still voice, my God, it, it'll make us hard. So when the gentleness of the Holy Spirit comes in to talk to us about super superficial values and and because it's not a threat or because that he's not talking down on us or trash, then that's the part where we tend to clench, clench up or run away or we become non-receptive to. Because what it is, is it's doing a greater, greater work inside my heart. It's doing something deeper down inside my heart. And because it doesn't sound like how I've been corrected or it doesn't sound like how I've been pruned, or it doesn't sound like how I've been taught, right? Then I'm not tender and responsive to the greater work. And because I'm not used to this kind of love, because I'm not used to this kind of love, then I'm not really open to receive this type of love from God because nobody's ever loved me like this. Nobody's ever nobody's ever responded to me this like this. Nobody's ever corrected me from a place. Nobody's really reminded me of my greatness. Nobody's really put a finger and said to me, these are the things that you need to work out differently. And so it says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively change as you mature spiritually. Woo! Say that. I got to mature spiritually. Well, when I mature spiritually, I can give God my whole heart because I'm not a, I'm not worried about God shaming me. I'm not worried about God condemning me because if I go back over to Psalms 91, I understand his protection for me, his faithfulness to me is going to be a shield and a wall. He's not getting ready. His faithfulness to me isn't to embarrass me. His faithfulness isn't to me, isn't to call me out. His faithfulness to me 
isn't to um into, isn't to um bother me. Typically, if I'm in a situation, I'm just gonna be honest. This is how tender and responsive God is. He showed me this. Typically, if I'm in a situation like a group setting or a situation, and something has occurred between me and another person, then I either pull that person to the side or say it's in a group text. I come out of the group text and deal with the person instead of dealing with something I don't like in the group. I come out of the group to deal with the person over to the side because my job, my idea of my, my love for you, I'm never going to put you on front street. I'm never trying to embarrass you. Now, I did not used to be this way until I understood that's how well God, God covers me all the time, right? God covers me. He doesn't do things to embarrass me. He doesn't do things to make me feel bad. That's not because he knows because of my issues, my insecurity, the creator know me, my areas of rejection, he knows that I won't be responding to that. I wouldn't be tender and responsive to the sex. So he's taught me in a group setting when I'm dealing with people, I was not that way. Ooh, I tore some relationships up, trying to be forthcoming, all out front and all this other stuff. No, he taught me, pull myself over to the side Deal with what you got to deal with that person on the side because that's how I handle you. As a matter of fact, the scripture says, find that just that he will conceal a matter. Ooh, I feel the power of God on this. I got to wrap up. He says, I'll conceal a matter. So it says, but be transformed and progressively change as you mature spiritually. As you mature spiritually, right? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he's going to direct your path. By the renewing of your mind, focusing, this is what we've got to start doing. I got to focus on godly values and ethical attitudes. Oh, Jesus. Focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, right? So my focus becomes godly values and ethical attitudes. So when God points something out in me, that's not a godly value and an ethical attitude, what he's saying to me, this is an area in your life for you to come up higher. What we tend to typically do when the Holy Spirit, when Holy Spirit points out to us, my God, it's shameful. Thank you. Ephesians 5 and 12, it's shameful to even mention what the disobedient do in secret. It's shameful even to mention with the disobedient and, and the other scripture on concealing the matter. My God, I thank you for that. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me give you this and then we're going to wrap up. We out of here. My God. And, said, and so focus on godly values. So when God, so, so when God, here it is, it's James um, 52, 50, it's J Jeremiah. Oh, come on now. What my scripture said? Um, Oh, it's Jeremiah 50 and two, I think. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. It's the glory of God to conceal. We look at God, it's the glory of God to conceal something, right? So when he does reveal it to that we're not focused on godly values or ethical attitudes, the goal is not for us to withdraw from him. Here's the goal. It's so that we can prove ourselves what, to what the will of God is for us. Ooh. It's so I can prove myself to what the will of God is, which is gonna be good, acceptable, and perfect in his purpose, his plan for me, right? Well, if any time the, the Holy Spirit reveals to me, I'm not acting in godly values or ethical attitudes, insecurity and rejection and the orphan spirit or whatever else it is, teaches my abandonment issues and all that other stuff, what my flesh will tell me or my heart, because remember our heart, we carry the deep seated values of our systems in our heart. What the false, not the love towards father will say, what the false thing tells me is conceal and hide my heart from God because I don't like the way that felt, even though what he gave me was necessary. Please stay tuned for this week's announcements. Oh, oh. Please join us this week we have the devotional Tuesday through Friday at 5 a.m., Ladies Bible Study Tuesday at 7 p.m., the Saturday morning prayer call at 7 a.m. Sadly, we do not have cup this week. Remember, as LMJ always says, go be loved today. Lakeisha M. Johnson, also known as LMJ, is an evangelist, teacher, entrepreneur, mentor, 
author, trainer, and community advocate. She is the founder of LMJ Ministries and CEO of LMJ Inked, a printing, publishing, and consulting firm. Lakeisha self-published her first book in April 2019, entitled The Launch, a book for anyone who wants to start anything. She is the host of Coffee and Conversations, a digital interactive daily devotional on 11 podcast outlets, including Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Facebook Live, YouTube, and Instagram. She's been heard in over 40 countries. She is the creator and host for Pillow Talk, an exclusive event created by women, especially for women. Lakeisha is mission-minded. She is focused on serving God by serving others. If you had to describe her in one word, it would be tenacious. Lakeisha believes in order to impact our communities and make significant impact, a person should be actively engaged in service and or entrepreneurship and love. Lakeisha's famous quote is, Go be loved today. Ladies and gentlemen, Lakeisha M. Johnson.